What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video on TPL locks. Today I want to make a video on cowrie shells. You might know them from people who put them in their braids or in their locks, who wear them as necklaces or other type of jewelry, but there is a broad and very interesting history that surrounds these cowrie shells. So today I want to talk to you about the different ways in which these shells are being used, including education, games as currency, so they were used as money for a long time, and for spiritual practices. Let's get into the video. So what are cowrie shells exactly? So cowrie, or cowrie, which is the plural version of cowrie, um, are small sea snails, actually. More exact, they are marine gastropod mollusks in the family, I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce this, so to be short, they're called cowrie. So the shells of cowrie are usually egg-shaped and they are very smooth. They are porcelain-like and on the bottom there's an opening where the snail used to be and on the top there's an edge with teeth that we usually recognize from people who wear them in jewelry. So nearly all cowries have this porcelain like shine and which is probably the reason why they were used as money. But before we get into how they were used as a currency, I want to talk about education and games because these cowrie can use as dice. There is a Nepalese game, a gambling game that uses these cowrie. And for instance, when you throw six of them, the ones that end up with the opening up those are the eyes that you count. On this screen, you can see how many eyes you've thrown by throwing these carry shells. So in the 1940s and 50s, these carry shells were actually used in education as well. They were used as a teaching aid in infant school to count, to add, and to sub subtract. Wow, that's a difficult word. Subtract, to count, to add, and to subtract. <laughs> So let's move on to the currency. So dating back 3000 years ago, the Chinese were already actually using these shells as money. And the symbol for money in Chinese, which looks like this, is actually rumored to be inspired by the cowrie shell. So the tooth edge that you can see on a cowrie shell kind of reminds you of this Chinese symbol for money. They've also been found to be described in Indian literature, so they were probably also used there. And before 1500, some parts of Africa were also using these shells as a monetary tool instead of bartering. So before the 1500s, most countries were still bartering, trading things um, in order to get certain goods that they needed. But after that, using carry shells for that really exploded in popularity. So after the 1500s, Western nations through the Atlantic slave trade really started introducing the Maldivian cowries into West African countries. The Ghanaian unit of currency known as the Sadi or Kadi, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, was actually derived from the word cowrie. So the cowrie shell is mostly found in the Indian Ocean. So around islands like the Maldives, Borneo, Sri Lanka, many of these shells could be found. And they were even found on various parts of the African coast from Somalia all the way down to Mozambique. So in Western Africa, they weren't really found. They were brought there through trading and bartering and shell money was actually used as legal currency up to the 19th century. So before the abolition of the slave trade, many Western countries would actually get these cowrie shells from the places that they were found and then send them to West Africa for the slave trade. As these West African countries couldn't find these cowries naturally around them, it was a very lucrative business to bring those cowrie shells from parts where they were found easily, bring them there and they would have gains of up to 500% the original value. So after the 18th century, carry shells were no longer used as shell money, but they are still used for spiritual practices. So let's get into that. So cowrie shells were among the devices used for divination, 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 which is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or unknown by supernatural means. And Indian astrologers were actually found to use these cowries to learn more about the future and the unknown. In certain parts of Africa, 
Carries were used as a charm of good luck, signifying sexual pleasure and good luck. On the Fiji Islands, carry shells were drilled into on both sides and worn on a necklace by the chieftains. But Brazil probably has the most interesting story. And from Brazil, we will go back to West Africa and their use of spiritual practices. But in Brazil, carries were used to consult the Oryxas. And the Oryxas are really interesting, but in order to explain to you who they are, we have to go back to West Africa. Because in West Africa, we can find the Yoruba people. So the Yoruba are a West African ethnic group and they constitute 40 million in total. The majority of this Yoruba people is from Nigeria, but they can be found in Ghana, Benin, Ivory Coast, and Sierra Leone as well. And due to the Atlantic slave trade, Yoruba people have communities in Puerto Rico, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, and many other countries and islands in the Caribbean and South America. So with them, they took their religion and spiritual practices. And this is where the Oryxes come in. So one of the most common Yoruba religion practices is the Orisa. Not the Oryxas, but the Orisa. So the Orisa are the various godly forms that reflect one or the various manifestations of God. So it's basically an avatar of God. And the human versions of these avatars are called the Oryxas. So to tie it all back together, the Oryxas were communicated with through cowrie shells. So in order to consult these Oryxas, the Brazilian Ruba people used cowries to talk to them, to know more about their future, about the unknown, etc. So next time you hold a cowrie shell in your hands, you might find yourself communicating with the Oryxas. So lastly, we know cowrie shells from jewelry, especially in locks. And since this is a lock channel, I am going to show you a few people with cowrie in their locks and also how you get cowrie shell on your lock because for the longest time I didn't know how people did that and now I know how. So I have about four pictures to show you of people with carry shells in their locks. So when we look at the first picture, we can see that first of all, she has a beautiful set of locks. They look like semi-freeform locks to me. Um, and she has multiple carries in her locks here and there. And I think that she put them on her hair with a rubber band. So one way to do it is to weave your lock through the carry shell and another way to do it is to kind of hold it onto your lock by using something like a rubber band or another thing that kind of supports it instead of your hair itself. Another way to do it is to buy jewelry that has a carry shell on it and I think this is a maybe a safer way to do it instead of weaving your lock through it because um, yeah, this doesn't make you weave your hair through those teeth that you see on the shell. I think those can be quite, quite sharp and that can end up damaging your lock. So this is one way to do it by carry jewelry. Another way to do it is buying a headband that has carry shells uh, attached to it. So instead of putting it in your hair, you can kind of use things that you would normally use for your hair, like ties to put up your hair or a headband and buy them with the carry shells already attached to them. And now lastly, this is the most common thing that people do with their carry shells is attach it to the end of their locks. So this is one example of that where she has a few locks here and there with carry shells on them. And people do this with a bobby pin and a rubber band. So I will show you a video of someone who explains how to do it. So to wrap this all up, although the cowry as a currency lies in West Africa's past, its symbolic value endures. As the Hansa say, whoever is patient with a cowry shell will one day have thousands of them. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.